Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the velocity of a disc that's rolling across the ground just here. So let's say that this disc right here is rolling across this ground with a velocity from its center, O, with a velocity V, O, just here. And of course it's to the right, so that means it's got a vector attached to it, right? And we know if this is a case of pure roll, in other words, no slipping, that means we will also have a corresponding angular velocity of our disk as well. And, and of course, logic will tell us that omega is going to be in the clockwise direction. Okay, so how do we how do we prove the well-known formula that the magnitude of V, O is going to be equal to R omega? How do we prove that? Well, in order to do this, let's just consider this disk, this disk actually rolling a horizontal distance dx across this floor. So this is our floor just here. And this second disk is actually just our first disk after it's rolled a horizontal distance dx. So this distance right here is a distance dx just here. That's the distance it's rolled horizontally. Okay, now let's explore this distance mathematically through the use of an animation. Okay, well this animation shows this disc rolling a distance dx horizontally. And if you look at this yellow line that I've got just here, this yellow curve, we know logically that the distance in yellow here must be equal to this distance in yellow here. Hopefully you can see that. Logically, hopefully you can understand that. Let's replay that one more time. So we know that the circumferential distance is going to be equal to the linear distance it's rolled. All right, let's, let's make that roll one more time. So we know this distance here in yellow is going to be equal to this distance here. If you can get this concept, then the rest of this proof should be super easy for you. Okay, there we go. All right, now let's go back to the maths of it. Let's redraw our disk after it's rolled a horizontal distance dx. That means that this distance right here is dx, just here. This distance is here, dx. And we also know that this circumferential distance just here, which I'm drawing in orange, is also dx, just from here to say here, that's also dx. Now, how do we find the magnitude of dx? How do we find that? Well, we know that this wheel has a radius r here and r here, right? And I've drawn the radius, like, I've drawn the center of the circle way off, but um, that's only to make space. Um, and we also know that if it moves a distance dx, that means it's been displaced an angle d theta. Right? It's been displaced an angle d theta like this, right? And I'm only going to focus on the magnitude of the angle d theta that's been displaced. I don't want to focus on the vectors just for the sake of simplicity. But if we wanted to calculate the magnitude of dx, we know that's going to be equal to r d theta. I've shown that in a previous video. r d theta. Notice I'm working with magnitudes now. No vectors anymore. I'm working on the magnitudes of dx. dx can be expressed as r d theta using our circular motion um, circular motion um, formulas. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide both sides by dt. And what I'm left with is I'm left with dx divided by dt is going to be equal to r r d theta d theta divided by dt, right? And because I'm working with d theta um, as a magnitude, that means when I solve for this, I'm going to be left with the magnitude of vo, right? Although we know it's to the right, I'm just going to be working with the magnitude of vo, and that's going to be equal to, well, r is a constant, so it's just going to be r times d theta dt, which we know by now is just the magnitude of vo is going to be r Omega. Okay, that is your answer, guys. That is your answer. That is what relates VO to Omega. I hope you guys understand that video.